Hello, tarot lovers, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Elizabeth, and on this channel, we talk about building your spiritual confidence so you can listen to your intuition and read your tarot cards with ease. And today, we are going to be taking a deep dive into the Hanged Man card number 12. We're going to be looking at the symbolism. We're going to be taking a deep dive into the Hebrew letters, the Kabbalah, the astrology. We're going to look at everything and see how it all works together to give you a deeper meaning of this card, including the symbolism that's right there in front of you on this card. And of course, I find looking at symbolism is such a powerful way of understanding the deeper meaning of the tarot card. So I reckon I should just spin the camera around and get stuck into it. What do you think? Let's spin the camera around. I'll see you in a minute. Let's have a look at the hanged man. Now the deck I am using is the giant Rider Waite Smith deck and I'll make sure there's a link to that if you're interested in the uh, comments and in the description box. And the deck I recommend that you get to study the tarot is the Rider Waite Tarot deck, just the one in the yellow box. It gives you the first basic colors that were intended for the deck. There's many variations, of course, but these are the original colors and it does help you to learn the symbolism. And my hope is as we start to unpack this deck that you're going to get really excited about it. And it may not be the origin, the, the, the actual deck that you use to read with, but um, it certainly is a wonderful grounding to help you get started. And of course, if you would like to see the cards that go before the hangman, make sure you like, subscribe and hit that notifications bell because it'll mean you'll be able to find me again to watch my symbolism playlist and you'll get notifications when I put up the next lot of videos. These are my symbolism cheat sheets. I made this one first, which has all the symbolism on it. Then I made the worksheet and then I made the symbolism cheat sheet that I'm using to talk to you about the symbolism. I've made it available in a big bundle, which in my Etsy shop, I always make all of my cheat sheets really affordable so that it makes it easy for you if you would like to support my work and you would like to have the cheat sheet that I'm using to talk about the card, then it makes that really accessible for you. So we're going to work through this cheat sheet together. I'm just going to pop it over there and pop the card here. And let's have a look at this card. So the Golden Dawn title is The Spirit of the Mighty Waters. So water, as we know, is emotion. So we're talking about spiritual depth of emotion in this card. So the numerology of this card is three, even though we see a 12 there. And that's because apart from the spiritual numbers of 11, 22, and 33, all cards in, all cards, all numbers in numerology reduce down to their single digit. So that reduces this number down to number three. So this is a, um, a number, number three is about creativity. It's about communication. Other cards that reduce to three are the Empress, who, which is about um, fertility, feminine energy, creativity, um, and the warmth and care that you put yourself out there into the world with, and the world, which is about uh, new beginnings and putting yourself out there, out into the world with everything that you have learned in your, um, in your journey through the Major Arcana. The Hebrew letter Mem is the Hebrew letter that is associated with the hanged man. And Mem is a letter, it's, it represents water. And so water is 
emotion. And of course, we know with the Hebrew letters, it's always about gaining wisdom, but humility and reflection and delving into your emotion all at the same time. The letters are so complex in their meaning. It is one of the most powerful letters in the Hebrew alphabet. The other three are Aleph. Now, this is interesting because Arthur Waite attributed Aleph to the Fool, which is the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And he also, and then of course, the other letter that is a, um, a powerful letter in the Hebrew alphabet is Shin, and he attributed that to judgment, um, which is card number 20. So it's interesting, Eliphas Levi, who Arthur Waite learned an enormous amount about the tarot from, he did a lot of writing about the, the deeper symbolism of the tarot. He wanted to attribute Shin to the full card. And if you look very closely at the fool's jacket, you can see that there are varying symbols, not just starbursts. And I go into this in more detail in my uh, symbolic talk about the full card, which when you look in the description box, you will see the link to the um, playlist and you can go and watch that if you're interested. But you'll see a little pitchfork there and that's a shin. And it's like a little um, respect to Eliphas Levi because he wanted this card to be known as Shin um, and um, uh, Arthur Waite didn't agree with him. So he called it Aleph and then made judgment as Shin. So we'll, we'll, of course, we'll go back and visit Shin when we talk about the judgment card when we get to the end of the Major Arcana as we are travelling through the deck. So this idea of having deep wisdom that is also um, reflective of your emotion. So we are looking at on the tree of life, the Kabbalistic tree of life, we are looking at the pathway from Jebura to Hod or from strength to splendor. So building our inner strength to be the best we can be out there in the world. Again, we're looking at the classical element of water. So the emotion, the unconscious. And if we look at the hanged man, he's hanging upside down. So he's essentially uh, reflecting on in his emotion and trying to access his unconscious. Um, the planet Neptune is the golden dawn attribution for this card. And Neptune, of course, is associated with consciousness, emotion, expansion, um, and it's quite an idealistic planet. It's where you might dream about how things might be or how you might um, break away from convention and be more creative in your life. And this is exactly what the hangman is trying to do. So if we turn over the page, we are going to see the symbolism. So he is upside down. And this is actually a shamanic ritual that links back to the god Odin, who spent years upside down trying to get in touch with his deeper understanding of the world. So we can become really entrenched in our beliefs. And so this idea is about taking time out to think about our deeper way of being in the world, but in a way of look, I, I actually talk about this card as looking at life from a different perspective. And I'm thinking about the Hermit card here. I'm gonna pull that card out for you as well. This always happens. I start talking and then I realize that there's another card I want to talk about. So the Hermit card, again, gray, black, gray, gray background, but this is a very different, this is a very different way of taking time out. This is about looking within yourself to find the wisdom that's there. So you're taking time out to reflect on your deeper knowledge you know is there, you just need to access it. I always think of the hangman 
as this idea of he's upside down. So he's trying to think to himself, how can I look at this all very differently to how I normally would? Um, the tree of life is in the here across the top. So this is about the shape of of a letter T or Tau, T-A-U, which is the symbol of life or resurrection or coming back to life like Jesus, which of course there are those traditional symbol, that sort of traditional symbolism in this deck. Um, Tau or the cross represents happiness and calmness and coming to a conclusion through thoughts or life's events. The arms form a triangle. So it's quite deliberate that these arms are behind the full, the, the full, the hanged man's back. And his legs form a cross. So this is about the symbol for alchemy of sulfur. And of course, sulfur is is about transmutation or changing from one form or another. And we think of the alchemists, you know, trying to make gold. They got all these metals and they were melting them down and trying to ultimately create gold rather than obviously having to go and find it. And, though you know, they're on the track. We, we kind of create gold now, don't we? You know, you can buy gold jewellery that uh, looks very gold and they're getting better and better at doing it. Um, but yes, that's what that's about. So, so this idea of, of, of transitioning from one state to another, thinking about, um, how you might do things differently. Again, he's upside down. He's looking, uh, at life from a different perspective. He has a halo around his head. So this is yellow again. It's a traditional, color for halos and it's about spiritual experience and enlightenment and again we're looking at the head here which is more about thoughts and if we think about the chakra system you have got um, the third eye and the universal spirituality um, above the head and then of course you've got the yellow shoes here representing the idea of having this enlightenment but in a more a form of grounding so if we look at the um, the actual fool himself, his hands are behind his back, but they're placed behind his back and only one foot is secured. So he's not forced to stay there. Very easy for him to just reach up, release himself and come down off the tree of life. He is choosing to be there and choosing to reflect. His blue tunic is the colour of intuition. It's the colour of emotion. And it's symbolic of listening to yourself, listening to yourself in your heart space to find your enlightenment. And of course, the red stockings are symbolic of passion and action and shows that the hanged man's legs are active and he could get down at any time, but also that when he does get down, he wants to go out and take action on the enlightenment that he's had. Again, grey sky it represents the confusion that the hanged man is feeling at this given moment in time. So I do hope that is helpful to you in understanding the hanged man in a deeper level and how all the symbolism comes together to actually create an overall meaning for this card. The next card we're going to look at, of course, is death, which is card number 13. I cannot wait to get started. So I will see you uh, in the next video when we will talk about the death card. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notifications bell and I will see you in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.